This week, Drew and I interview Epic Cigars owner and founder Dean Parsons. Dean founded Epic Cigars in 2010, working closely with master blender Renato Villamil for more than 10 years. Parsons is now a permanent resident in the Dominican Republic and continues to learn and grow and expand his knowledge of the premium cigar industry. Epic Cigars are currently available in fine retailers across the U.S., Canada, Germany, and Netherlands. Don't forget about Switzerland. You can visit them online. Uh, if you want show notes, you go to stogiegeeks.com forward slash 314. And then in our second segment, we actually get to interview uh, Storm Bowen of Cigars for Warriors. Uh, interesting charity. Super excited about that opportunity as well. He held multiple positions uh, there and uh, within the military. He is retired military. He's also the founder of the Cats Group on Facebook, DirtyCats.org, in the Cats Cigar Festival. And he's served on the advisory council for the state of Texas. So we have two Texans and one Rhode Island here on the second segment. And but before we get to that, we have Dean, owner of Epic Cigars. Stogie Geeks, episode 314 starts right now. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Hosempa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. And we- Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. Welcome to episode 314 of Story Geeks. I am your host, Joe Hozempa. It is super awesome to be here. I am smoking a Epic Cigar, and we get to talk to the founder of Epic Cigars, Dean. I'm also sipping a Bloody Mary. I'm sure it's going to be a great pairing. But before we introduce Dean, I want to check in with our co-host, Drew, over in Texas. What's going on, buddy? Hey, nothing much, Joe. How you doing over there? Just, uh... Uh, yesterday, just uh, had to work at the uh, brick and mortar and uh, spent half my day over there hanging oh. around with the lounge, having fun. And, you had to uh, pull out the sci- the, psycho- the psychologist couch and deal with yes. the patrons as they smoke oh, yeah. their cigars and worry about and try to solve the world problems. Yeah, but then but then I went back to some old Stogie Geeks uh, episodes and yeah. we started watching those and we were enjoying the uh, the. Uh, the early viewings of you. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So there hasn't so, yeah. been much improvement. I can tell you that. You know, oh, no. I stutter in real life. That's the way it goes. I tell how it is in real life. That's the way it goes. And my hair is awesome. That's the way it goes. <laughs> That's it. That's it, <laughs> it's baby. It's about the same, right? I'm. I, I really haven't changed much, you know. But anyway. Well, <laughs> well you're missing the. Uh, the uh, what do you call those lamb chops? Yeah, 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 yeah. They're growing in, just so you know. Oh, they're growing. They're growing in. They're, they're coming. They're coming in. You know what nice. I mean? They're, they're they're definitely coming in. So we'll have to we'll have to bring that back. I I might do a couple of guitar appearances on stage, uh, coming up in uh first quarter of uh, twenty twenty, uh, just to do it. So, uh, we'll awesome. see. So. It'll be a good time. But anyway, we have the privilege and honor to speak to <laughs> owner and founder of Epic Cigars. I'm super excited. And we're also going to talk a little bit about Nat Seco, which I'm wicked excited because, Dean, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, it's probably at least once a month I mention Nat Seco 
oh, I'm, I'm such a fan of the brand, and but I do want to learn more about Epic as well. I've had a uh, short experience with that uh, exposure here in the Northeast, and hopefully you can bring that back, uh, bring Epic back in the Northeast. I'm, I'm super excited when that happens. Dean, welcome to Stogie Geeks. I appreciate it. Um, broke, the sound is a little bit in and out, um, but I can hear you now when you're talking direct, but when you guys... We're chatting. I, I, I was missing a little bit, but uh, thanks for having me, guys. Great to be here. Uh, I'm in Miami right now. Uh, I'm just back from Big Smoke in Vegas mm. and uh, doing a tour in Florida and then head up to the Northeast and then uh, back to Texas before the holidays. So nice. uh, thanks for having me on the show and, and uh, thanks for all the work you guys do and, uh, and keep it up. Yeah, yeah, we will certainly keep it up. I, I'm not going to lie. I'm having way too much fun being the host of Stogie Geeks, and I know for sure Drew is having way too much oh, yeah. fun being the co-host of, of oh, Stogie yeah. Geeks. You know, Stogie Geeks is alive and well. We're, the, we're, we're, we're like the pirate radio of the cigar industry. Did you ever see, <laughs> did you ever see that movie, Pirate Radio? Yeah. Super awesome. <laughs> like, like uh, I, as, I mean, I, I went to Berkeley College of Music, friggin' like, love music. It's always moved me. And when I saw that movie, I was like, dude, this movie rocks. Drew, have you seen that movie? I have. It's 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 amazing, right? That's the best it way is. to describe story geeks, right? It is. You know? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, absolutely. Absolutely. So Dean, um I w I do want to uh take time out talk a little bit about both Epic and Nat Seco. Uh, let's talk about the relationship there. Let's talk about how you got started in the industry. Um, how, how um, it's very important for you yourself. It, it's within your bio. You 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 tend to focus on your continual knowledge of the industry in in cigars, and then you work with Master Blender Ronaldo Viamil. So tell us a little bit about that relationship and how that got started and how you got started within the cigar industry. <laughs> Sure. Um, well, I actually met Rolando probably back in 2005, 2006 at the time. Uh, I was living in, in Turks and Caicos Islands and just traveling. I was with a real estate group there. We, we developed a hotel marina property and a lot of my clients at that time were looking for, uh, for premium cigars. So I started traveling to the Dominican to, to buy cigars. And after several, several trips, I met several manufacturers from you know all the big guys and and a lot of the small guys and at the time Rolando uh, had a small factory there the big brand that comes out of the factory that Rolando runs is uh, Christoph mm -hmm. Christoph cigars so I met Rolando and we started actually I did a Turks and Caicos cigar and it launched in 2007 uh, just for the island when I was living in Turks and Caicos and then I moved to the Dominican in 2009 after the, you know, the worldwide real estate market crash. Mm. And uh, we started a new real estate project. And then I started spending more time in the factory and came up with the concept for, for Epic and started creating the blends 2010, 11, and, and actually went full time, uh, removed myself from real estate and started going full time with Epic in 2012. Mm. Uh, but the, the first, the Maduro and Corojo blends we launched back in 2010. Had a few shops here and there and in the U.S. and in Florida and then didn't really start to grow until until 2012. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was exposed. I believe it was 20, 2015, 2016 when, when I mm -hmm. began, you know, to, to explore some of the some of the different blends out there and, and yeah. stuff like that. And, you know, I, I've I've been a fan. Uh, here, I always try to support lo local brick and mortars, and then what happens is, you know, then they end up, you know, kind of going, and then, you know, you try to do an online hunt yeah. and all of that stuff. And unfortunately, sure. with 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 opposition, not only here as as Stoya geeks, but even with the consumer, more stuff comes out, more stuff comes out, yeah. and we, we get flooded with information. And yeah. you know, you you as as the cigar owner has to always constantly be fighting that fight in that ring of building that top of mind awareness to make yeah. sure that that not only the retailers want it, but also that there's a demand for uh, for the cigars from a consumer per, uh, perspective as well. You know, yeah, it's it's a challenge, and you know, we we actually had a lot of success in the Northeast. You know, from probably 2000. 12 through 2017, 16, 17 in Jersey, Philly area, more in particular, a mm -hmm. little bit in New York. And um, obviously you're dealing with struggles with keeping up with inventory, product, uh, events, travel. So, you know, all those things become a challenge when you 
when you start to grow, you know, you start making 10,000, then you're making 50,000, then you're making a couple hundred thousand cigars. Yeah. And you have to keep all the balls in the air and uh, <laughs> takes a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of money and a lot of time yep. and, uh, and, and some good people. So it's, yeah, lots of challenges. Um, but I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about that as we move forward. Um, but yeah, we're, we're in a, we're in a much better place now. And, uh, Definitely going to start focusing more on the Northeast in, in the coming months and and definitely the first part of next year and uh, excited. We've got, had great support from the retailers uh, in that area and now we're working to to get our products you know back on the shelves and and support the the retail base. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean the, like the Northeast, Texas, Atlanta, Georgia, obviously South Florida, huge super hot spots when it comes to um, you know, the cigar cadence or, you know, we're never going to bring back the cigar boom of the days of Mardi Gras, but you know, it, it, at least, at least like those are some, some, some hot spots that a lot of the, the smaller companies tend to focus on. Let's talk about how you began constructing not only the concept of Epic Scars and the name and a little bit of the branding, but let's talk a little bit about your relationship on how you started, like what type of flavor profile were you going for when you started and did that mm -hmm. change over the course of the years? Um, and initially when we started Epic, we, you know, I was working with a Brazilian rapper, which we have in the Maduro, the Arepiraca. Um, I started with all the blends. I start with a wrapper that I like and you should try to move forward from there and, you know, getting advice from, from Orlando. And then, then once we started to create some test blends, I would take them out to other friends of mine in the industry living in the Dominican there, you know, everybody's uh, supportive and, and it's easy to connect with, with guys that have a lot more knowledge than I do. So anytime we'd work on blends, I would, uh, you know, take a couple bundles and, and share them with uh, a lot of people that I know in the industry, uh, Friends like Jose Sejas, who ran Tobacco Lara Garcia, uh, Jose Blanco, you know, mm. lots of advice over the years from him and Emma, and he smoked a lot of my cigars, uh, gave me uh, a lot of direction on the Epic Habano, which I launched later. So I, I wanted to start with more medium to full products initially, and because I think that's what the boutique market was looking for. And now we've gone more to medium, you know, after the Maduro Corojo than we moved to the uh, Habano, which is more medium, the Epic uh, Connecticut La Rubia, which is more medium, but it's got that San Andreas binder, so it gives it a lot of flavor, and the uh, Epic Project E, uh, the San Andreas, a little more medium, but super complex. And then we have the Maduro Fuerte as well, which is a full-bodied version of, of our existing Maduro blend. So started sort of medium full and then kind of tapered off a little bit and, and then sort of came back up and... Uh, now we're working on some uh, some new lines from Nicaragua uh, that we'll be launching next year, and uh, those will be more medium to full as well. Yeah, you, I mean, you bring up a, a, a valid point, right? Most of the small boutiques do start with that medium to full pepper, Nicaraguan profile, s sweetness, San Andreas, salty, all the different components there. Mm -hmm. They start with that, right? And then they go mm -hmm. out, and then as things get moving, and, and you start developing relationships within the industry, they tend to go back into the Connecticut lighter mild. And what I'm seeing now is a trend here at 2019-2020 of the uh, kind of sticks that are still in that medium profile but carry that Connecticut name. I've been dubbing them here on the show as complex Connecticut's where, you know, like because when people say, oh, well, you know, we have a Connecticut – if you're a medium to full smoker, you're immediately like, I'm not interested. But there are yeah. a lot of Connecticut's that are starting to come out where the blends and, and the flavor profile and how it sits on your palate is getting a lot more complex, which I think is super cool for the industry, you know? It, it is. and you It know, keeps I'm, all you I'm guys on your toes. <laughs> in, in, I'm a full body guy in general, but I, I can smoke a couple of Maduros and a Corojo in the afternoon and, and smoke, uh, you know, my Connecticut in the evening and still enjoy it because it has that flavor profile. We wanted to create something that wasn't, that was appealing, obviously the Connecticut wrapper, because that sells on average two to one to, to any other wrapper. So you want that in your lineup. But, uh, we added the San Andreas in the binder and we have Dominican and Nicaraguan in, in the filler. And actually, even though Epic's produced up, up until now, it's been produced in the Dominican, all the, all the original blends, 
we use we use Nicaraguan in our fillers in, in every cigar that I have, which which I think is important for customers and all because so many people over the years are like I only smoke Nicaraguan, I only smoke Nicaraguan, and mm. uh, you know we we combine you know all those uh, we use uh, Viso from Esteli in in all of our all of all of our blends. So um, you know which which kind of it, it adds something a little bit different, and uh, I always like our, our customers or potential customers to know that and, and give us a try and. And our Connecticut isn't typical. It's it's got a lot of flavor, and it's funny. We we do that in three sizes. We do it in a Churchill, a Short Gordo, and a Robusto. And the Short Gordo outsells the sixty by four outsells the other two lines, mm. and actually has the most has the most flavor. So um, it's uh, interesting, but you you never know kind of where you're going to end up uh, from where you start. And uh, but it, it's a lot of fun. It's been been exciting, and you know, learning all the time. Yeah, yeah. Drew, you have a question. No, I would just, uh, yeah, I was just going to ask. So uh, when you first started out there, uh, uh, Dean, uh, so what were your test markets? Like, where, where were they at? Mm. Um, actually, some of the first shops, um, if I can think, well, I mean, Florida, Neptune Cigars was one of our first retailers in Florida. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> back in, you know, 2011, 12. Um <laughs> But okay. uh, Sky Tobacco, Jersey City, Hoboken Cigars, those were some of the first shops. Actually, it's funny, uh, Juan Cancel, you know, from Protocol, he, he walked me in okay. both of those shops. And I barely knew Juan, just knew him from a social media standpoint. But we both had something in common. I was a police officer in, in Canada for almost 10 years and, wow. uh, you know, kind of met Juan and, and a lot of the guys on through social media and through Facebook. And on one of my first trips up to Jersey, New York, Jersey area, we met and smoked and, and hung out, and he actually, uh, you know, walked me in a lot of places and and opened the door for me. So that was it was, it was pretty cool. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. That's uh, and 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 that's a testament to to the industry. It's like you know, hey, yeah, everybody tries to help each other at some capacity within the, the their capacity. Some have more leverage than others. I get it, but yeah, sure. Protocol is super cool. Cigar yeah. company as well. You know, what I mean, they, great, great cigars, yeah. great guys. You know, Juan, Bill, Kevin. And uh, build their whole team, and uh, Eric's making great products for them. So uh, you know, and there's lots to go around for everybody. So it's uh, you know, it's we're all making different cigars. My palate's different, but I, I smoke everything those guys make, and I've, I've smoked everything they they've made and, and been to a lot of their releases. So uh, you know, wish them continued success. Right, right, absolutely. What, how did you come up with the name? Like, was there a running, was there like a runner up name that it could have been this and, and stuff like that? No, you know? <laughs> no, no. Well, my first cigar in Turks and Caicos was, uh, was called the Turk Select, which was, uh, a cigar that I branded around the Island. We only sold it there, started with, you know, 5,000 cigars and kind of grew from there and did it from 2007 to 2009. And then after I left and moved to Dominican, we, I stopped that and really wanted to brand, come up with a brand that I could take internationally and my picture recording picture but that's something i learned in turks and caicos and the dominican is, is probably one of the top 10 places in the world to do that uh something i would do almost every day when i was living in dominican and because i just recently relocated to miami but um a friend of mine has a company called epic kiteboarding and he's based at hatteras and uh, i was literally sitting on the beach with some other friends Thinking about cigar names, googling stuff, having a cocktail. Sure. And I googled Epic Epic Cigar in 2010. Sure. Epic Cigars. I googled it, and literally it came up on GoDaddy. I bought it right there. But then I took the next step of, of starting the trademark process and intellectual property, protecting intellectual property, and you know got all that in place. And thankfully, I did that because uh, you probably there's there's a, there's another Epic on the market that you're aware of, and and uh, you know they're on the market because we we've allowed them to. Uh, to to use the name and uh, and put agreements in place uh, for that. Mm. Um, so, you know. Yeah, you got to play well in the sandbox sometimes until they mm-hmm. get that cease and desist yeah. letter from your corporate attorney, <laughs> yeah. right? It's, uh, until they yeah. until they get that, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's yeah. super cool. That like you know, because I, I you know I've started different different things and 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 different companies, and I remember in in 2010, it's like that's usually how it starts with Google. Let me Google a couple of names mm-hmm. and and do that. Mm-hmm. So Epic in your mind was always the running candidate if it was available. Yeah, I mean, it just, I, I just, like I said, Googled it, that that instant bought it, and then I knew, you know, then the next step was, okay, you want to come up with a, 
a, a cool logo design and yeah, label sure. for the cigars. And that, that process probably took close to a year yes. um, to, to get the logo to where it is today and, and the band design. And uh, it, it's, uh, it's a one-of-a-kind sort of design. It's unique. When you see it, you're not going to mistake it for something else. So I've uh, been blessed with uh, some good support from friends that have helped me just kind of put it together over the years. But the, the, the design of Epic is what I envisioned from, from day one. But going from my mind into the actual logo and, and design on the cigar and the, the label is you know, is, is a process because I'm not I'm not one of those artistic guys uh, who can put that together. But I, ha- I had the vision in my mind of what it would be. And, and uh, we finally got there. So. Right. Right. Take take us through a journey visually or or, or or verbally of when you begin starting the blends, like what type of profile not not geographical area, but what type of flavor profile were you going? Because it, that has to be a painfully nerve wracking experience. You got the company trademarked. You got the name. You got somewhat of a logo by then. You're gonna get some traction. You have some contacts to put it in, and you're like, shit, I gotta produce a stick that like rocks. You know what I mean? Like, like, <laughs> and so yeah. so now you're sitting down ri- with Ronaldo. Take us through that process. Like, hey, man, like, like, because uh, because me personally, and I know the story geeks always email me with uh-huh. with saying, man, your interview questions are like so awesome. Like, because because like uh, we, we try to get that visual. Like, like if we were a fly on the wall, like, how did that go? Like, how did that conversation go? What, what was it like he, you, you had a good relationship or you had to keep tweaking blends or you were searching for something? If you could kind of elaborate as to what you were searching for. Well, I mean, I was just, in essence, you know, searching for something that that tasted good to me, and uh, but something that had had a little bit of a you know medium plus sort of flavor profile. And the biggest, I found the biggest determining factor a lot of the times is switching switching out the binders. Mm. You know, the, the 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 Epic Maduro has that Cameroon binder and to make Nicaraguan filler, but we went we had Sumatra binder, we had you know, three or four different binders. And it wasn't until we hit that Cameroon binder, and I don't know who suggested it. It, it wasn't me. It was probably Rolando or Jose or somebody, and we tried it, and and we had it right there. The the Corojo was a little bit different because you've got that Corojo wrapper, a lot of pepper, spice. Uh, that has a Dominican binder to make Nicaragua filler. Um, and actually, we launched the Corojo in 2010 and reblended it in 2012. So the Corojo kind of changed on the advice of you know people in the business that that know a lot more than than I do and uh, and we tweaked it even after getting great ratings from smoke and a lot of different magazines we tweaked it and it's a better cigar now than it was you know in 2010 mm-hmm. um, so yeah it wasn't it's just kind of you, you know it when you it's it's not um, you just know it when you when you taste it. Dean Drew has a question for you. Uh, he he already let let me know as we kept some of the the live viewers uh, entertained. And uh, Drew, you want to place a little money on the bet of, of I know the answer or no? You want you, you yeah, want yeah, yeah, yeah. twenty bucks? Yeah, yeah. 20 bucks? 20 bucks it is. 20 bucks, 20 bucks, it, bucks is. it is. All right. He has a question for you, and I'll let you know how I answered it, but I want to hear your answer first. Go ahead. Sure. <laughs> All right. All right, Dean. So you are uh, you founded in 2010. You're coming up on the 2020 anniversary. When mm-hmm. can we expect a anniversary cigar? <laughs> it's coming out next year. It's uh, We actually got some of the first samples uh, a couple weeks ago, just before the Miami Mega Herf. Uh, they came out of Nicaragua. I can't tell you where they came from uh because we're not we haven't decided 100 percent uh we've got samples from from a couple different uh different manufacturers uh and i'll be heading back down to nicaragua in uh, january uh january and february to uh, to work on some things with uh with arthur who is the owner of nat seco and uh, my partner sure. and uh yeah the owner of, of all of our brands so yeah, yeah. so we're, we're excited yeah we're, we're definitely coming with an epic 10th anniversary so uh stay tuned for that and we're, we've got a couple other things in the works as well and uh, when are you going to release that sir when's that going to um, be released i would say target date i'm hoping we're hoping before the ipcpr uh, oh. but at the latest it'll be the ipcpr but i'm hoping it'll be before wait 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 because wait, wait, wait. Uh, because now i have 20 dollars on the line 
How before. before? Like a month before? You just said before. Oh, like it really? No, 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 no. You said before. <laughs> no, no. June, you said June, before. June That's counts. It. No, wait a minute, Drew. June counts as IPCPR. <laughs> in business world, a month in or out counts as IPCPR. <laughs> is it gonna release, right? Is exactly. it right? Is it gonna be like like January, February, it, May, or is it gonna be no, June, well, July, it's August? It's gonna depend on uh, when we go into full production, which hasn't happened yet. So that won't happen until we decide 100 percent on uh, on the blend. Sure. So, um, say we decide by the end of January or mid February, we need April, you know, minimum, minimum 90 <laughs> days. Exactly. Uh, so, but I, we, I, I couldn't give you a date. No, that's cool. You know, this, when this it's is, ready, that's when we'll release it. Not, not until then. So this is what but you can still keep the bet going. <laughs> no, no, no. The bet, the bet, the bet's already done and I lost because, okay. because, uh, I said, Drew, when he comes back, ask him a question because I want to get into the Nat Seco stuff. Uh, and and yeah. then and then he's like and then he, and then he goes okay I'm gonna ask him about a 10th anniversary I go the answer is gonna be IPCPR next year like you know what I mean and <laughs> and, and I lost Drew uh, it'll it'll be in the mail All it, right. it, it will be in the mail I lost I was like they always wait for IPCPR and then and then they always say we can't tell you about the blend until we talk to the the, <laughs> the print magazine you know once we talk to the print magazine who gives us a 90 change rate and not you two jamokes on Stogie Geeks, right? As soon as we talk to them, then we'll call you like in August when we're in August after we got all our orders in and then, and then you know, I know how it works. I know how yeah. it works. The problem is people, podcasts don't want to say how it works, but I know how it works. It's all good. But yeah. hey, I would love yeah. to see it in March. Now, Drew. Me too. Drew, if it doesn't happen in March and it happens IPCPR, you're mailing back to 20 bucks. All right. <laughs> my birthday. My birthday's in April, so I already know it's going to be here by April. There you go. Awesome. Awesome. Perfect. Take Perfect. us. Take us through your relationship with Nat Seco and talk a little bit about some of those blends, because sure, know, you know. sure. Okay. Well, um, so the owner of Nat Seco, Arthur, uh, and I became friends about five years ago. Uh, he was visiting the Dominican and uh, spent some time at our factory uh, with Rolando and I, and. Uh, just, just a mutual friendship uh, initially, and we continue to talk over the years at uh, the IPCPRs. Uh, Arthur owns the Nat Seco brands, and Nat Seco stands for National Cigar Company, mm -hmm. uh, which dates back to '65. He acquired that brand, National Cigar Co., I think in the '80s. I don't know, you know, don't quote me, but it was sometime around then. Um, and those brands, and they, they were originally, you know, the company that had all the Nicaraguan rejects, the Cuban. Cuban legends, you know, budget type cigars. And then when Arthur acquired the, acquired the company, they moved into, you know, super premiums. And now they have the, uh, the Natsiko 1965, which was, an, you know, the number 18 cigar last year and Cigar Aficionado. They've got the HHB Habano in Connecticut. The, the, the Habano has been rated 90. Uh, cigar Aficionado, they have another one called Casino Real. Uh, another cigar called the Elephant Ears. And uh, those are all produced in uh, Omar Ortiz factory in Nicaragua. Uh, Arthur's been working with him for five, four or five years. Mm -hmm. uh, fantastic products, great cigars. Obviously, you know, they've, they've gotten the great ratings. And uh, so in, at the beginning of this year, Arthur acquired Epic Cigars, acquired my brand and myself um, to help me grow uh, the company and take it to the next level. Um, you know, I spoke as we started the, you know, the podcast, the challenges, you know, from, from starting basically a cigar business with, uh, with little money and, and, you know, growing and getting to a hundred and 200 and 300,000 cigars. And how do you get to the next level? Well, without equity and, and the support, uh, I just was never able to get there and, sure. and, and obviously even lost a lot of our retail base in the Northeast that we're, we're gaining back now. Um, but Arthur came in and, uh, you know, there were some things we, I wanted to continue to do with the company, which was keep the original uh, cigars the same, uh, all the original blends, and obviously expand on that in Nicaragua, which we're uh, in the process of doing. But uh, fantastic partner. He knows the business. He's been in the industry for many, many years. Um, so Arthur's, he owns the Natsiko brands, but he also owns Xander Gregg, which is based in California. This is where all of our distribu distribution is now, and Xander Gregg is a full-service distributor. Uh, they carry 7,500 items um, from, you know, pipe tobacco, premium cigars, you name it. Um, so it's great to be with someone that has the resources to help grow the brand and, the, and shares the same vision as I do. And we're not really – our brands are different. We're not really com competing with each other, and, and I'm, uh, you know – 
out there marketing and uh, working with his brands as well. Uh, I've been traveling with Arthur's son, Alex, uh, quite a lot recently. He was in Minnesota with me and uh, he's, he's 21, but um, learning the business quickly and growing as well. And so we've got a full team now. We've got uh, full distribution now set up in California. We've got increased inventory as of the beginning of this year. And now we're in a position to to scale and grow the business the, the way that I always wanted to. So it's kind of a, uh, it's been fantastic. It's, but now it's just getting out there and, and it's great to be on your podcast. So, so I can let, you know, previous or new retailers know that we're, you know, we're in a different position now. We have the inventory. We, we're not going to run out of products. We are, are, even our limited edition cigars we have uh in in large quantities now that we didn't before and uh so it's yeah it's a it's a nice it's nice to be able to walk into a retail shop and to not have to do a sale so you can stay on the road for the next you know couple weeks i you and know to just build the relationships and the, and you know and the sales come naturally so uh i'm definitely uh, in a different headspace and definitely feeling confident about uh, our growth potential you know moving forward you know you i i want to thank you for a- exposing that to not only us but the listeners as well because you know uh it, it, what a lot of the consumers don't realize and this is from again it's from my experience and my travels when i speak to consumers about cigars and different people have different reputations in the industry they reband they reblend they produce it blah 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 summer marketing uh you know super cool uh marketers and make mediocre cigars etc cetera, etc cetera. And what they don't understand is at the end of the day is that when your cigar is on a shelf and retailers have it, it's a business. And once yeah. and once it's a business, it gets into the business realm of business challenges. And what consumers don't realize is that, you know, us as consumers, and it's, not, and it's not a cigar industry thing. It goes across many boards, you know. Oh, I was looking for this type of furniture, and I saw this deal, and they have no loyalty to the company, and, and they go they make a decision on price, or they make a decision on availability, and, and stuff like that. And, and, and what I've noticed across industries, right, because I work outside of the cigar industry as well, uh, with, 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 with that being said, it's like, you know, uh, I've noticed that brand loyalty even outside of the cigar industry is just not there. So consumers, yeah. so consumers, if, if they can't get a handle of that, whatever, out of sight, out of mind, you, you got to build that up. But what they don't understand is that it's challenge for you to put that cigar on that shelf and for them to walk into the shop and spend eight, nine, 10, 20, 30, 40 dollars, whatever it is, right? For your product, they don't understand the blood, sweat and tears that people made it, first of all. And then they don't understand that they, they, they just want their product and go there. And so when you express these challenges, I said this in early 2018 of, of Stogie Geeks that we're going to start to see a lot of collaboration work, not only within blends, like, you know, but collaboration work within companies because you can combine forces uh, of product and, and produce a better output for both companies happens in the cyber security field all the time yeah. where a company gets acquired because they like this functionality of whatever their uh software was or whatever their purpose uh-huh. was or whatever their their the their software does and a bigger company or a smaller company buys them and combine they produce a better output for that and what i th- yeah. and, and and that's exactly what you just elaborated to is like hey you know we're here uh, we we've made some some changes and stay on the lookout because now we're coming back in your rearview mirror and it's gonna be awesome, you know. Yeah, it's exciting and and yeah, and we've seen it in in the industry. I mean, Swisher, Drew Estate. I mean, that's a, a large example, but sure. there, there's yeah. many there's many examples and uh, you need that support. And uh, like, as I said, it just it puts me in a different place. And and you know, everyone the, every boutique brand that's in this market is and some way or another gone through the struggles that, that I was going through with Epic and the challenges. Um, so it's, you know, although people don't talk about it much, it, it's going on and, uh, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's not easy, but, uh, you keep working hard and stay focused. And, and obviously I was showing, you know, I was building something that was attractive 
to Arthur as he was watching me over the years and, and uh, something that he, he also believed in. And not just Epic and the brand, but, but he believed in me. And, and that's, that was more important because, you know, I said, why? You know, this was, you know, at our meetings at the beginning of 2019. I said, why, why Epic? You, you know, you've sure. got your own brands. You've got, you know, you're having success. You, you don't need, you know, another cigar company. And, and uh, he said, oh, I believe in you and I, I believe in what you've created. And, and uh, that's when I knew we had the right, I had the right person, the right partner, because, listen, there's money everywhere as far as, you know, people acquiring businesses or investing in, in cigar businesses. But uh, unless you understand this business and what it takes to get to the next level, uh, you could just be putting, you know, good money after bad. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, sure. he understands how to be successful financially and and from the standpoint of brand building as well. Yeah, br br brand building top of mind awareness not only for the retailer right which is your goal right get into the mm -hmm. retailer but then you're gonna get into the consumer right yeah and 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 get into the consumer challenges of you know as consumers we're flooded with information I mean especially now you got social media we have easier access to founders of companies via social media um, you know we have the the old model of having a yearly event where people can meet in the industry and purchase like an IPCPR, some of the other different cigar cons that are out there that, that either here in the States or, or elsewhere around the world. And yeah, you have those kind of lightning strike events where you could sell more because you're, you're in front of, you know, 50, 80, 90, a hundred thousands of retailers at once. But again, yeah. even though you made the sale, you still have to continue that journey to now want that consumer to jump in and say, hey, like to walk into the store and say, do you carry this? And, and they say no. And, 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 you know, you should. And then after a while, it gets going. You know what I mean? And, you yeah. know, and, 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 you know, what's super cool as well is that you said that was one of my questions was 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 uh, going to say, hey, you know, uh, Nat Seco chose you. For a reason, you know what I mean, yeah. and so it's a whole rebirth and a whole re repath of you now can go down together, and you you have more more power. You you'll be able to 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 make uh, better pivotal moves from a business standpoint, mm -hmm. which yeah. I think is super important because you have to, right? You have to. What's your take, my f Drew? Do you have a question or because or, I have one final question. Yeah, I was just gonna right. get into the you know, to the uh, brand uh, the brand ambassador. You know, oh, just you kinda... took it from me. You took it. I right. did. I'm you sorry. Did. No, that's good. Yeah. That's good. That means that yeah. means I don't have to ask it anymore. That's yeah, good. No, that's well, good. yeah, just just about you know, because you know, even yesterday when I was at my my brick and mortar, my home lounge, you know, talking with customers and just talking about you know, they came in there, they would ask for a certain cigar, and you know, it's like okay, well, we're sold out of that, but you know, can I get you something close to another brand? But I don't have it. And that kind of, you know, that's one of the things that I need to, you know, just let everybody know, you know, in the in the brick and mortar world is, hey, you know, you got to have some comparabilities there. And there's there's room to, to make room for the other uh, brands uh, that are not there. But, yeah. So can you touch on your uh, ambassadorship? Are you planning on doing anything like that? Is the family, uh, your family involved in it 100 percent? It's something it's something actually we're working on right now uh, that Arthur and I and, you know, our team in, in California that we're discussing between now through the holidays. And we hope to, to put something together early next year. Uh, it's an important part of the business. Uh, we is. just want to make right. sure we we go about it the right way and, you know, obviously empower people to to support the brand and, and find ways to, uh, you know, take care of, of customers that are supporting us. Uh, but it's it's in process and something we're definitely going to be launching in the future. So right now we don't have anything in place, but it's something we're working on. Yeah, I I am. I don't know if this is a personal quest or not. I don't know if Drew is 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 with an opinion of of this. I I feel that cigar brands need to bring back the ambassador program. And I think I'm the only one on the planet because I speak to retailers and I speak to the reps and I speak to the owners on this. And they're like, well, you know, there's been some things in the past that have happened. For example, you know, a brand ambassador can say I need five boxes because I'm going to do a gathering or a 
if you want to be a hipster, I'm gonna have a hearth. Right, All right. I've never, <laughs> I've never used that word. Right. I mean, yo, man, this, we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a hoot nanny. That's my word. Right. No. Right. Yeah, so yeah. you know, but no, like, like you know, and, and then what happens is they end up, you know, doing a deal for someone who has a gun club and instead of buying from the retailer. They do, and you have all this stuff. I've heard those arguments. I've heard uh-huh. that. Well, we have social media now, so why do we have to have brand ambassadors on? Because you have an influencer. You have a guy, a right. gal, who's getting some free sticks. And is telling that. Okay, sure. Now, I know the brand ambassadors do get house sticks that they could pass out to their friends. And then there's <laughs> we, the, we, don't, we can't give out any free uh, sticks. You know that. Yeah, well, you uh, well, sure, mm-hmm. you know, you can uh, you, uh, run a social club. Like, seriously, like, like I would rent space, right? This is what wow. it's going to turn to. Like, in, in 2030, mark my words, we're all going to go into a cigar shop. It's going to be like when you go overseas. It's going to be on a menu. We're not going to be able to walk into a humidor. It's going to be on a menu, and they're going to be like, I'll have this. It's going to be like ordering a freaking cupcake in a freaking dessert factory, right? And, 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 and then they're going to serve it for you. They're, they're going to cut it for you because that's probably going to be law too, right? Can't cut right. your own cigars, right? I'm going 2030. <laughs> now, I'm going out on a limb, but I'm telling you, right? And then what's going to happen is the freaking employee is not going to freaking know shit about cigars. They're going to screw up the cut. You're going to be pissed because you paid a cutting fee because you know they're going to add that yeah. on to. And, you know, you got a visual. It's just going to be like a, a spiral effect, right? But, like, yeah. open up a social club and have, like, like I, would, I would rent space, open up a social club, charge a membership, have all these boutiques send some freaking sticks. We all get together yeah. once a month, divide the sticks, give everyone a scan pass for the social club. Dues membership pays for the freaking booze and the entertainment, cable, lights, electricity, da 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 And then do that. Mm-hmm. You can't stop that. You, you, you can't stop that. And then if you and, and then they're gonna have these little these little like uh, bodegas of Scott yeah. shops that are yeah. members only. And I'm telling you, it, it it's coming to that in twenty thirty, right? Yeah. It's gonna it, it's yeah. coming to that. It might be twenty forty, but, but 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 by the way the the rate we're going, right? You know what I mean? And and mm-hmm. it's it's just ridiculous, right? It's it's just getting ridiculous. Yeah. And I know we can't pass out sticks. So so if I get three of your sticks, I'm like, yo man, you should try this. Oh, that's illegal. Like, dude, I'm excited <laughs> about a product. I mean if we've listened to a song, right, and we didn't mm-hmm. buy the song, right, we streamed it mm-hmm. on YouTube for free, right, and we listened to the yeah. music video. Back in the day, we used to stick the cotton balls or the piece of paper <laughs> in the cassette tape, right? I'm showing my age, yeah. right? We used to do oh, that. Yeah. But we used to freaking share stuff. That's how, yeah. that's how brands are made, and that's how memories are made. And, and I feel the government is taking away that experience of that's how memories are made. Like, yo, man, I tried this cigar, freaking rocks. And then he's like, hey, man, I tried that recommendation. That was awesome. Oh, but you had to purchase it because it was illegal. You know what I mean? It's ridiculous, yeah. right? It's a, but and then in music, hey, have you heard this new band? Or, you know, hey, man, I bought one of those My Pillows from that crazy guy on TV. <laughs> Thanksgiving's buy one, get one free, right? The, Thanksgiving's buy one, get one free. But you're like, shit, does that really work? Like, yeah, man, it's like an air-conditioned pillow, it's beautiful, and the next thing you know, they're going to buy it. It's based upon recommendation, yeah. and what I don't understand is that right. government needs to just stay out of the business. And then we yeah. need to bring back the brand ambassador program, or some, maybe it's not the old model, right? Because mm-hmm. regardless of cigar industry, right, and I'll, and I'll end this thought here, regardless of, of, of the cigar industry, we have the old model of the way we used to do business all the time, and then we have the new model, whether it's technology or government regulation or whatever, and somewhere in the gap is where all of us consumers fit. And us yeah. as business owners need to figure out that gap and adjust to whatever these crazy rules are, and then we need to pivot right, from a business perspective. <laughs> but, but when you relate it back to the cigar industry, we just need a new version of the ambassador program. Maybe you don't have hipster hearths. Maybe you don't. May, maybe you don't have gatherings of, of passing out cigars in the shop. You know, the cigar owner that gets pissed when when the owner comes in and passes out shops. Like, dude, he's making oh, yeah. your shop a destination. Hey, I like that small shop because you know I go there. I get I, I get to try new stuff. That's what the industry is all about: trying new stuff. Experimenting your plan. How the hell are we gonna do that? From a freaking someone on social media taking a picture of their boot with their freaking yeah. thing. Hey, yo, oh, I'm smoking. It's, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It drives me nuts. It drives me nuts. All right, I'm done ranting. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> anyway, Stogie Geeks listeners, you can check out everything that's going on. Uh, you go to epiccigars.com or you can go to stogiegeeks.com forward slash 314. That's this episode. And you can get all of the. Uh, 
links there. I encourage you to follow uh, Dean on his uh, social media. Follow Epic Cigars. Follow Nat Seco. Catch an event, right? Find out where they're going. And definitely catch an event for sure, you know? Yeah, we've got some stuff. Uh, We've got events coming up in Texas in December, uh, December 12th. We're at Stogie's in Houston, and December 14th, we are at Zodiac Cigars. Uh, they're just north of Austin, a uh, great group of guys. So those are two events we have coming up in Texas and working on some things uh, actually in Florida uh, right now. I know you've got Storm coming up, Cigars for Warriors. We're oh, yeah. a, a big partner mm. with Cigars for Warriors. Uh, we started a new partnership with them uh, in the spring at the Cats yes. Fest. Um, so they're doing great stuff, and uh, we're 100% uh, on board with uh, with Cigar Show Warriors and the Cats group and uh, having a lot of fun. And uh, they've got a lot of people working hard, you know, yeah. for, for no money, just uh, doing great things for the troops. So um, please uh, extend my regards to, to Storm, and I'm sure I'll be seeing him when I'm in Texas. I, I will. He's already texting me saying that he's on – He's online and it's saying waiting. I just pinged him and said two minutes because my interviews never awesome. my interviews never run on time. Oh yeah, it'll be forty five minutes. Uh, they're, they're close and they're getting better. But it's one thing that I don't have, Dean, and that's word economy. I don't know what to say. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's all good. Uh, you know. <laughs> listen, listen, guys. Th- thanks so much for having me. It's a real pleasure. You know, you can't put a value on uh, on this kind of you know opportunity to to get out to your you know your customers, your client, not customers, but your you know, your fans, social media groups. So I always like yeah. to share the story and uh, hope uh, I can take this opportunity again sometime. But but thanks for everything you're doing. I really appreciate the time. Today. No, we appreciate you coming on. And Thank also, you, if you have any product update, just flash me an email. I read them. I read them as I get them. You know what I mean? So you have any Absolutely. type of, of, of media release and, and stuff like that, send it my way. I always throw it within the rotation. So absolutely. Sounds great. Dean, thanks for joining us on Stogie Geeks. Any updates, you let us know, and we'll see you next time. Have a great weekend, guys. Yes, you too. Take care. Stogie Geeks, when we come back, we're going to talk Scots Warriors. And I owe Drew 20 bucks, but we'll be back.